talk that shit. And what is the um uh, SO? SO stands for Sister Outspoken. Outspoken. My name originated because um me and my sister was going to start a show. Nobody knows this really. <laughs> me and my sister was going to start a show called um, Sisters Outspoken, where we do skits and talk about different things going on in the community and kind of do kind of like parodies about it or whatnot. But then she moved away to go to college. So, um, and I started really getting back into my poetry realm. And I started to, uh, I was a, a voice on a um, radio show. So I went with the name Sister Outspoken. And that's what that, that came with. Finesse, people have been calling me Finesse since high school. I was from a crew called uh, Top Notch. And um, people always said I moved with Finesse. So when I started rapping, I was using Finesse when I hopped on tracks. So when I decided to battle rap, I didn't know really, like, you know, should I just go with finesse? And I was utilizing SO at that time, so it was like, like the SO finesse. The poet, the healer, the community activist, and then, you know, just that real finesse and shit in the street sometimes. That was dope. Now, um, are you originally from the Lama? Nobody has ever asked me that that's crazy <laughs> i wasn't even expecting that um i moved to delamo when i was like eight nine years old from compton so i originally the first place i ever lived was in compton oh compton nobody Compton's knows that that's so funny they know now <laughs> okay how long have you been this a two-part question. How long have you been rapping? And how long have you been battling? Mm, um, I started rapping when I was like 17, I want to say. No, 16. I probably was like 16. And it wasn't like, I wasn't trying to be a rapper. So it wasn't like I was making a whole lot of music or something like that. I just, all my friends rapped. And my brother had a studio. So we would kind of get faded being in the studio, and they would want a girl on the track. So I just would do verses. And it, the first time I started out, um, my brother was in a rap beef. And all the guys, I knew who the guys were, and they were older than me. So I heard a beat one day, he was in there on a beat or whatever. And I was like, man, let me say something to these niggas or whatever. So I just, I hopped on the track, on a, a diss track was my very first rap ever. <laughs> and I killed it. <laughs> I didn't even know I could rap. <laughs> but I actually did really good. So then that happened. So then people in the neighborhood started hitting me up trying to get me on verses. So I did a lot of verses. So I was like 16, I think. Like 16. And I started battle rapping at 24, I think it was. Yeah, I think I was about 24 when I started battle rapping. Don't ask me how old I am now. I wasn't, but <laughs> how long ago was that? <laughs> <laughs> good, good. I have been um, battling for about seven years, so yeah. Now, have you? You said you do poetry as well, right? Mhm. Mm I started off in spoken word. I've been doing spoken word since I was fourteen years old, and not in the traditional sense where um, I didn't start off in like a poetry lounge or something like that. Um, I was actually in this uh, competition. It was a it was a, a debutante um, kind of thing. And um, it was the one thing I wanted to do for my mom because I wasn't the kind of girl to do cheerleading or drill team and dance type of stuff. I just wasn't that kind of girl. I was more into sports. So I told her I'll do that for her. So we got to the, I did the little modeling part and speeches and stuff. I didn't have a, a talent. I didn't know what my talent was. That, and these, that's better to say it like that. You hadn't tapped into what your talent. Yeah, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And these girls was playing saxophones and singing and doing monologues and 
all of this amazing stuff and I just like prayed about it and I was just like, you know, I'm just gonna write a poem. And it ended up being something immaculate. And I performed it utilizing the the performance techniques that they showed us and trained us for. And I got a standing ovation. It was hundreds of people in the room. I got a standing ovation and I ended up getting um second in the thing. Poetry first. Spoken word so that's first. That's how I started. Rapping. Yeah. Then and then, okay, let me out. elaborate with that too. So that happened. It was somebody in the room who saw me that day. And they said they never saw a young person talk about things that I was talking about. Because I went from seeing people get shot in the streets to talking about the, the government giving Africans AIDS to talking about what we need to do as a people. And I was only 14 years old. So she like took me under her wing and she was from the um, Black Chamber of Commerce. So she would just hit me up and, ha and just send me places to go speak. So I actually started off doing, spoke doing spoken word motivational speaking to the youth. So that's how, just, just talking about what I saw every day and then what I feel like we should do as a young people. So that's, that's how I started off doing spoken word. I think that answers a lot about how you battle rap now. Probably. Tied it all in. Okay, do you prefer, if you have any preference, battling male or female? I enjoy battling men more than women. And I don't, I don't actually know why that is, but I think it's because... I, when it comes to sports or when it comes to like um, slap boxing and like just doing stuff like that, I always had male friends that I did that with. It seemed like the females always got a little too like, they didn't act emotional or something or we couldn't play like that, you know? Like with men, like we could like sock on each other or, or slap each other around and then smoke and then we we're all good, you know? Like women... And then I think I'm, a, I'm more of a soft spot for women, maybe, because I just feel like we've been through so much. I just, I, I don't attack them the same. I don't know. Like, with men, I feel like we can, we have a different kind of conversation. And I, I just go, I just, you know, like, I have, I feel like it's more of a fight in a different way. And I'm way more aggressive, like, in all layers of myself. Now, how many, how many battles have you had thus far, and like, um, I started, I who, who have you battled that's to you worth naming? Okay, how many battles have I had? Um, honestly, on top of my head, I don't even remember, but I'm gonna say like ten or eleven or something like that. Okay. I don't even. I honestly don't remember. I stopped counting. I don't really care. Um, people that um, worth naming. Um, I battled Miss Merck. I battled Mulatto, um, Mulatto Black on one day's prep. That was a crazy experience. Um, Dre Vicious. Um, who else did I battle? And Emerson Kennedy. That oh, JTS. They were they were very dope females. I was excited to battle them, um, and and Emerson Kennedy. <clears throat> now, how do you think it is being a woman in a male dominated sport as battle rap is? It's had its ups and downs. You know, people automatically assume that somebody's writing for you. So at, at a point in which a woman gets good, it's not her pen anymore. So that's the first fight that we have as women is being respected as good writers, as great writers, as writers that can go toes with the best of men. And it's messed us up when women have actually allowed men to write for them and got outed about it. Then I messed it up for everybody else that's dope and that really cares about their craft because it's already hard on them. They already expect you to have some, there has to be some man behind you if you did that. There's no way you thought that out of your mind. So that's what makes it hard. Um, 
what makes it a little bit easy if you're an attractive woman woman people kind of like to look at you already anyway so it makes it easier to kind of get eyes on you and then it's all up to you on what you do with that and what you have to say because you cannot just be cute and weak the game is not for that anymore like it has you know you can get a little bit farther with some people but you have you are hard if you actually have something to say and you're an attractive woman it is a man dominated field so it's a man dominated sport and fan base and all of that so it'll make it a little bit easier for you on that realm of things because people like to look at women facts so um do you feel the the way that your, your style is it's not um you know, we would say back in old school, uh, braggadocious. Um, it's not like a lot of gun bars and things of that nature. The 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 things that everybody used. Do you feel like? So I feel like um, it was a process and a journey. You know, because when I first started battle rapping, I didn't battle rap originally to give content to give a message or to do anything like that i was just going through a bunch of shit and i saw it and somebody was like oh i think you can do it and i just tried it out to see if i could do it and it became therapeutic for me so at first i was real raw rock because that's where i was at in my 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 life you know and i didn't really want to give people my personal business i was i was really um debating and light on that but what what happened was I got bored with gun bars I got bored with gun bars and it didn't do nothing for me internally and I started back doing my motivational speaking and doing stuff in the community and it's like I'm dealing with these people I'm telling them my story and how I you know how I view the world and then came to this point and then I get here still at that point I have to evolve my battle rap or I can't do it like I have to it has to be consumable to all aspects of my life and even though I, 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 I really um, struggle with it because of the battle rap fans I don't know what they will want and this and that but I just had to ask myself if I die today would I be proud of what I leave behind and how long would it live so I wanted to leave things behind that would live forever and I could be proud about it and I can give somebody something that to be a voice for them to inspire somebody else but you don't have to sound like everybody else and when you tell your story and you don't have to cuss and all of that and you really challenge your pen because it's more challenging not to cuss it's more challenging not to do gum bar you can't get gum bar out of anything but when you really challenge somebody you challenge yourself in that right you evolve as an artist as a writer and as a person and that shows your real impact and your greatness. At least that's how it made me feel. Being able to write rounds and do that. Tell my story, give a message, and not really cuss and talk about um, how I'm going to shoot you with this gun. So, do you think um, things like that, say like how um, Saga, he's like a Christian rapper... B dot, you know, he, he's a lot of black historical references shout and things like that. Oh yeah, shout out to all of them. Um, how do you think that's? Um, do you think it's a place in battle rap for? And do you think that's important to outside think, of all that violence and the gun bars? I think people like them, and even and even Loaded Lux, you know, and um, even the 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 lane that Daylight is even going on now. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important it's very impactful it's just, which is why they went so far even so fast you know because it's it creates a, a another high wave of vibration it is harder for people who are considered conscious rappers or um, talking about spirituality and things of that nature because it can it can ride a line of become, of looking corny you know or coming off as lame but when you're an authentic person with an authentic story and you, you're able to fuse um, a lower or like a, a more uh, rigid aspect of your storyline with some truth and some knowledge and some elevation of where you've come, it's, it's impactful. People can't deny it. 
and that's what makes people like Saga or like like B Dot. You know, B Dot got big off of his home league before he even got to any big league. And that way, he brought people to battle rap that wasn't even a part of battle rap. But he, what he was talking about moved the masses, and that shows you that it was needed. I went viral in my battle versus um, Trav on Cut. People took the clip of when I um, went into my sister house spoken, and I was talking about how the Chinese um, created gunpowder and how that was a part of why we were able to be enslaved. And I got into a lot of knowledge on that, and I went to that whole mode. And to me, that was my gamble moment. I just wanted to give this, you know. And it went viral. We got like over a million views on Facebook. And people, I would go places and people would like come up to me and, and talk to me about that. And they wanted it in battle rap. They wanted it in battle rap. And when I went on my own spiritual journey and, and kind of came back, I'm like, if I'm going to do this, I have to do that. So we'll see how they, um, my next battle drops, they'll see, we'll see how they you know, take to it or not. Rifleman shot me films.